two outbound base active circuits shown here, one of them realizing an integrator, the other one realizing a differentiator. Let's analyze to see which one is doing integration and which, which one is not. So look at this one. I'll, I'll talk about an intuitive way of looking at this, but uh, in a brute force fashion, let's just uh, write down the KCL, KDL equation and assume that op amps are ideal. So it means the input terminals have infinite impedance and uh, since op amp, they have a negative feedback. Let's make the assumption op amp are operating in linear region of operation, so they are not saturated. Therefore, the virtual short between the two terminals, two input terminals, is in place. So if this op amp has a, a on the positive terminal connected to ground, and therefore effectively the voltage on the negative input terminal is also zero. So with that in mind, uh, what we have here is whatever current coming out of uh, this, whatever current coming out of this uh, input voltage has to flow through the pack of these two parallel impedances. Let me just write it this way. So you can think of the C and R1 here as impedances in parallel. And then whatever current going out of the VN passes through this parallel two impedances and then passes through R2 to the output. So what we can write is it's a inverting amplifier. So we can say, and this voltage here because of virtual short is zero. So we can say this current is just a Vn and then minus zero divided by two impedances in parallel. So it's, it will be uh, R1 times 1 over Cs divided by R1 plus 1 over Cs. That's the total impedance or the two impedances in parallel shown there. That current should be equal to 0 minus V out, the, the voltage across this resistor R2, and then divide by the resistor R2. So as expected, when you write this down, we get V out over Vn, the transfer function for this simple amplifier, op amp based amplifier, you will see that it is negative R2 divided by um, R1. And then in the denominator, what we have is R1. In numerator, what we will have is uh, R1Cs plus 1. So 1 plus R1Cs. Okay, so that is the transfer function for... That is a transfer function for this circuit. What is it saying? Okay, imagine you go to super low frequency or DC and S, which is J omega, is so s when you're dealing with steady state analysis omega is the frequency for dc omega is zero so at low frequency or let's say close to dc or dc the as expected this cap is open impedance and it's just simply r1 and r2 it's just a simple non-inverting amplifier inverting amplifier so therefore the gain or the v out over v in is negative r2 over r1 as expected when S goes to super high, when the frequency goes to super high frequencies, then S goes to, R1CS goes to much higher values than 1, and therefore this whole thing just becomes a coefficient like K times S, and that is the signature for um, what we know as the um, differentiator. So this one obviously is an approximation of differentiator. Okay, what about this one? In this case, uh, we have a voltage Vx here and assuming, and let's say we have a voltage Vy here, but Vy has to be equal to Vx. Assuming that this op amp is operating in linear region of operation, not saturated, and assuming it's an ideal op amp with 
infinite input impedance for the input terminals. And because we are assuming the negative feedback loop is operational, therefore, the virtual short for the two input terminal is enforced. Therefore, the reason I'm writing that the voltage at positive terminal should be Vx, same as the voltage at negative terminal. We can find Vx as a function of Vo because effectively there is no current flowing through this wire going through the input negative, negative terminal. So there is just a simple voltage divider uh, from V out to Vx dividing the voltage between the two resistors R2 and M times R2 where M and N are two constants. So what we can write for this circuit is Vx, just a simple voltage divider, R2 divided by R2 plus M times R2 times V out. In summary, what we learned is Vx equal to R2 cancels out from numerator and also denominator, so 1, plus, one over 1 plus M V out. That's what we obtained from the first look at the voltage divider here. The good thing is now we found this voltage for the positive input terminal, so we can write a KCL for this node now. There are three things getting to this node because we know no current flows through the wire going to the positive terminal because op amp is ideal, input terminal has infinite impedance, no current flowing that way. So there are three current flowing. Uh, you can make the assumption that the sum of these three current should be zero from KCL, Kirchhoff's current law. So these three currents, uh, the sum should be zero. So what's going to happen is, um, let me just write it here. So we have the voltage across this resistor, it's Vx minus Vn divided, uh, that's the voltage, and then the current going through this resistor is Vx minus Vn divided by R. So we have KCL. So it is Vx minus Vn divided by R, great, okay, plus this current, which is the current going through the capacitor, Vx minus zero divided by impedance of cap, which is one over Cs. So we have Vx minus zero divided by one over Cs plus the, the current going that way, which is Vx minus Vo, divided by N times R. So it will be Vx minus V out, divided by N times R. So the sum should be zero. Okay, so let's, uh, what we can do is we can now use equations, say, um, let's name these equations. So let's name this equation one. And now we can use equation one, substitute for Vx. If you do that, uh, you will see we end up with, and then we end up with V out over 1 plus M. Let me just uh, write it in a tidier fashion. Okay, so 1 over 1 plus M times V out minus V I. Uh, we can multiply both sides um, by R. So if you do that, that's one thing, and then we end up with uh, I'm just trying to see whether I can just multiply the whole thing by, uh, yeah, R for now is good enough. So plus RC S Vx, which is V out over 1 plus M. And then what we get for the last one is um, 1 over N. And then we have V out over 1 plus m that's the substitution for that's a substitution for vx here and then we have um, and r is cancelled out because we multiplied everything uh, in all the three components by r and what we get finally is um, i'm just trying to be just careful here so minus um, i think the only thing we get here is V out over N should be zero. Okay, so the last action here would be if I multiply both sides by 1 plus M, V out minus 1 plus M, V in, and then plus RCS, V out, and plus V out over N, 
and finally uh, we get m plus 1 over n vf. Yep. Okay, that's what we get. And obviously the subtraction of these two will give you just uh, m over n vf. So that should be 0. The last step that I have here is this step. I'm going to just simplify it. So v out 1 plus, um, maybe I can just write it this way. As I said, these two components becomes, when you just simplify, becomes m over n times v out. And there's a negative sign for it. So minus m over n. And then what remains out of this guy is just plus RCS, because v out is factored out. And what remains here is minus 1 over 1 plus m times vi, which I take it to the other side of equality, so it becomes to the right side, 1 plus m times vi. Okay, so last step here. So v out over vn becomes as simple as this. 1 plus m, 1 minus m, over n plus RCS. Nice. So what we did here is we effectively found the transfer function for the circuit shown on the right side, this circuit. You can see contrary to the uh, first circuit that had RCS in the numerator for the v, v out over VI, the transfer function, nothing in the denominator in terms of S, a function of S. Now here we have, we don't have anything as a function of S in numerator, and the only component RCS shows up in the denominator. Uh, this is an approximation of an integrator, and if we want it to be a perfect integrator, the only thing we need to do is set M equal to N. If you set M equal to N, as a result of that, the two voltage dividers on the two side of op amp working um, parallel to each other. So this component becomes m over n becomes 1, 1 minus 1 goes 0, denominator becomes purely RCS, and the circuit is uh, effectively an ideal integrator because it only has RCS in denominator. And of course, it has 1 plus m in numerator, which means a sort of amplification there. So you can see that, therefore, according to this analysis, this circuit is implementing an approximation of integrator. Uh, this circuit is implementing an approximation of differentiator. Intuitively speaking, uh, you can see here that when you have uh, open circuit uh, in DC or low frequency for this one, it's just an inverting amplifier with a fixed gain of negative R2 over R1 in case that R2 is relatively small compared to R1, you can say the gain is nearly small value, or basically output is a small. But when uh, you have, you're dealing with high enough, uh, let's say, frequencies, high enough in terms of frequency being uh, larger than, uh, say, um, the, uh, the pole, or let's say, in, the, in this case, the zero of the system, then what happens is, um, you end up with, I would say, in this case, if uh, the frequency is um, larger than 1 over uh, R1C, which is the lo location of, let's say, 0 here, then 10 times larger than that. You would say you, you will be at super high frequency or very high frequencies, and as a result of that, this uh, impedance over here, uh, the, the cap becomes a smaller and a smaller uh, effective impedance. Because it's in parallel with R1, the overall impedance here, the overall impedance of cap and R1 becomes small enough so that the uh, inverting gain of this whole system, negative R2 over the whole impedance of these two guys becomes larger and larger. So as frequency goes higher, the gain that this system provides for higher frequencies will go higher and higher. So um, if, you, if you're supposed to sketch the body plot for this guy, what you see, just as a intuition, is if you're showing, let's say, a dB in terms of uh, 20 log V over VI, and then this is the frequency at uh, frequency 
much higher than 1 over R1C omega. So let's say, just to be fair, let's say, ah, let's say if, okay, so let's say I'm not able to erase this. Maybe I can do this one. Great. Okay, so all I'm trying to say is at high enough frequencies, you will see a response like this. So this is uh, R1C, omega equal to 1 over R1C. So that's why at high enough frequency, you will see that the gain in, in dB gain in body plot for magnitude body plot you will see that it is increasing. It's a sign of that this guy is a differentiator. For this guy, uh, as you can see, uh, we have an RCS in denominator. So what you see is in terms of, the, again, a body plot. Uh, so if you have dB on the y-axis, you will see just something like this. So 20 dB per decade, it is start dropping for the magnitude of body plot omega on the x-axis. So it's an integrator. Um, okay, so we drive the transfer function of these two circuits. We figured out which one is the integrator, which one is differentiator, and we also, in an intuitive fashion, we just uh, studied them. In this case, when frequency is very low, as I said, this cap act as uh, open circuit, and this whole thing will be comparable to each other. So as because we have zero here, uh, the smallest voltage here will be amplified considerably. At super high frequency or high enough frequency, this cap, impedance of this cap compared to um, other impedance seen at this node will be much smaller. So therefore, this cap is starting, getting closer to acting as if it's a short circuit. And because here is a ground at high enough frequency, this node effectively is short circuit to ground. And as a result of that, nothing from input passes to the output. So no wonder at high enough frequency, the voltage output is zero getting close to zero irrespective of V in, and therefore this is a, effectively a low-pass filter integrator. I hope you find this helpful. Thank you.